This video is brought to you by Squarespace. It was July 9th, 1961, Soviet Air Force Day. Spectators were in awe as a completely new supersonic bomber flew over the crowd, escorted by two MiG-21s. Sleek design powered by four engines with a maximum speed of up to Mach 2, it was a sight to see. It was the first time that this new aircraft was ever presented to the public, but Western military analysts had been debating for years about how the Soviets had managed to create the next generation, apparently nuclear powered, bomber. But the story behind the Bureau and the new aircraft project was a lot more complex than what was shown on the surface. This is the story of ambition, ingenuity and politics. But most of all, it's the story of one of the best looking aircraft ever made. The Miesashiv M50 Bounder. Our story begins in 1953, with the USSR receiving news from their spy network in America about the upcoming B-58 Hustler. A new supersonic bomber, relatively small in dimensions, but with the capacity to perform all the tasks needed for the time and deliver a nuclear payload right into the heart of Russia. It threatened the Soviet military and the higher-ups ordered the development of a new bomber to keep pace with the West, a challenge in which the Misashev Bureau was up to. Initially, the Bureau started out with a composite bomber. Some of these sketches included a two-part aircraft, one operating as a launch platform, and a strike aircraft that would separate upon entering the mission area. There was also another design based off a float which would allow the plane to take off and land on water, and some versions that had anywhere from 6 to 10 engines. By 1955, all of these concepts proved, of course, to be very difficult to materialize. But the idea of crazy modifications to this airframe would be a running theme throughout its development. But more on that later. The M50 was such a radical design for the USSR that when it appeared at the air show, it took the world by storm. But thinking about it, why did they have to wait till the air show? when they could have just built a Squarespace website. And wouldn't you know it, they also happen to be today's video sponsor. That's right, if you are a Soviet engineer, airshow fan, or even just someone starting a new venture, then Squarespace is the best website you can have. Their sites are already optimized for mobile phones, have the ability to run powerful email campaigns, and they also have a fantastic e-commerce tech built right into their framework, getting you into business right away. Plus, they have all the SEO tools that you need to appear on the front page of Google. So instead of waiting for the next air show in Moscow, why don't you go support the channel by going to www.squarespace.com found and get 10% off your first site and domain while you're at it. Back to the Soviets. Requirements stated by the government needed the aircraft to have a speed of up to 2,000 kilometers per hour and a range of 12,000 kilometers, as well as the ability to carry a nuclear payload. After testing 39 different concepts in wing tunnels, Misashev would come up with the final design of the M50 Bounder. The big question that remained was the position of the engines and the fuselage. The final decision went to the aerodynamically sound, but not structurally sound, placement, which we'll get to in a minute, with two pairs of engines with one mounted on the wingtips and the other on underwing pylons. The sheer size and advanced requirements set for the aircraft presented many challenges for the engineers and it took another four years to solve issues with structural stress calculations and materials needed for the aircraft. Initially, the Zubets Bureau was developing new turbojet engines for the M50, but development was so far behind schedule that in the end, they had to settle for the Dobrynian VD7 engine, which in total gave performance almost 40% worse than planned. 
Despite the final design failing to meet the requirements, only 10,000 kilometers of 12,000 kilometers proposed range, a prototype was approved and the M50 took to the skies in 1959. But was the aircraft doomed to fail from the first moment it took off from the ground? While the test pilots put the M50 through its first steps, the engineers got back to work ironing out the issues with the prototype design. This new version, literally called the M52, as in the second version, would fix many of the air quotes compromises the engineers needed to make. The M52 would be basically the M50, which ticked all of the needs and solved all of the issues with the original design. It was made to be a bit shorter in length, but with proper engines and the ability to carry large missiles, which would suit the new doctrine pushed by the government at the time. Again, after a lot of back and forth with the Ministry of Aviation, approval was given to create five prototypes in the late 1959. And the game was on for Russia's new bomber fleet. Now let's get back to the original M50. The first flight was successful, and the M50 even got a slight upgrade with its engines being tuned to provide even more thrust on takeoff. Unfortunately, this is the point of the story where politics took their hit at the project. Khrushchev's main direction for the future of the Soviet Air Force was missiles and not planes. Insane amounts of money were being diverted to space and rocket development programs, which would lead to nuclear ICBMs and the peak of the space race between the US and USSR. But on the receiving end of this decision were many prospective aviation projects and their bureaus that were left with empty wallets and empty hangars. Furthermore, another hit struck the Messerschiff Bureau. The Soviet government decided to close it down in 1961 and place Vladimir Messerschiff as the director of the Central Aerohydrodynamic Institute. A prestigious position, but never what was really his dream, to see the M50 proudly bear those red stars on its wings through the clouds. So now we're back again to July 9th, 1961. And you're probably wondering how was the aircraft performing in an air show when the Bureau was already closed and why the West was scared so much. Well, the decision was made to refit the prototype and make it ready for the air show as a show off to the West. An ironic one indeed. After getting additional flight testing, it was ready and on July 9th it was flying its first and last public presentation in all its glory before the eyes of spectators and the eyes of the world, only to never be seen in the air again. The M52 suffered the same fate even though the prototype was nearly completed because of one key thing that both prototypes missed the engines. Zabet's 1617 engines never arrived in time and when the bureau was closed, so was the whole series of projects. In the end, the design was sound, all of the structural issues were solved and many of the new advanced solutions were created for steering and controlling this aircraft. But it was the engines and the politics that put an end to this project. Mr. Chef tried to revive the program in the late 60s, having his new position in mind, but with no success because the design was already obsolete and the Sakhoi was developing the new T4 bomber, which we'll talk about more in a future video. It might be interesting to mention that there were a couple more daring concepts made during the development of the Bounder, with a long and proud future planned for the series. The M56 and M57 were designs very similar to their future counterpart, the XB70. Although unlike the XB70, they never left the drawing board and scale model phase. And the craze regarding the nuclear bomber thing was actually justified, but they were just scared of the wrong aircraft. It was Tupolev who created an experimental aircraft for testing the said technology called the 295 LAL. But the funny thing is, is that Messerchev was actually part of this project too and helped Tupolev in development. It's very likely why the wires got crossed and the West thought that the experimental and highly top secret M50 Bounder was the plane 
from their nightmares. To see what happened next with the nuclear aircraft project, I've got another video right here on the channel that you can go watch right now. But if you want to help this channel get up into the sky, unlike the failed Bounder variants, then please do subscribe and stay tuned for more aviation projects from all around the world. And if you want to suggest topics, see more content and behind the scenes, then check the description for Patreon or become a channel member. And also, I've got a Discord where you can chat with other fans. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.